Today I'm going to show you how to integrate 3D models into your WinCC application with the 3D model control in WinCC version 8. I'll show you how to load a model and we'll go into explore mode and look at the different things you can do with the model that you have. And in runtime mode, I'll show you how you can interact with a model so we can open the door, close the door, move the camera, maybe trigger an alarm. And then we're going to tie all this together by doing some alarm animations. And we'll create a couple of alarms that when the operator clicks on these, it will take them to a page that shows him exactly what area of the laser needs attention. So if this looks interesting to you, stick around and let's get started. First, let's take a look at the 3D model that we're gonna be looking at. I'm just gonna open this in the Windows 10 3D file viewer. This is just an equipment cabinet. This is supposed to be like a laser and it's got an arm here. It's got some cabinets and stuff that can open. So this is what we're going to be using. What I'll do is I'm just gonna copy this file and I'm going to go to my project directory to the GRACS folder. GRA stands for Graphics CS Configuration System. So in this folder, this is where your screens are kept. And I am just going to create a new folder here and I am going to name it 3D Controls. And inside this folder, I'm going to paste that file. Now we're going to go to Graphics Designer and we're just going to create a new screen here. And I am just going to go 1000 by 750. On our controls palette here, if you go to the bottom under Web Controls, you'll see WinCC 3D Control. It's going to kind of move the properties interface down. I'm just going to position this the way I want it. We'll look at the properties on this and under user defined, the scene file is where we tell the path to the file that we want to look at. And that's all relative to the Grax folder. So all we really need is 3D controls and then the name of this file. So I'm just going to copy the name of this file here. We'll do 3D controls, which is the name of our folder, paste in the name of the file, hit enter. So we can kind of test real quick if we got it right. We'll go to miscellaneous and turn on display and design mode and it's going to load. That's definitely our file. So we're good there. I'm going to turn that back off and I'm going to turn off for now the enable background. Let's take a look at the properties. There's two properties here. There's runtime and explore. So runtime is how you're going to use it once you get everything done. The explore mode has got an engineering interface where you can look at the objects, play around with the lighting, just kind of learn about the model and the things that you can do with it. So let's take a look at that one first. I'll set it to explore. I'll hit save and we're going to save this as laser cabinet and I'll just hit save and we'll go to runtime. So this is the, the engineering or the configuration view. I can just kind of move this around. One thing that happens when you click it, it automatically kind of jumps up. I don't really know what's going on with that, but we can position it where we want just by manipulating some of these properties here. So you've got your camera and when it's on your camera mode, you can just move the camera around. So I'll put this back down so we can see it. And let's go to the object itself and we can expand that. And you can see that it's got different components in here. So you've got your robot base, you've got your frame, you've got your conveyor, you've got your case, you've got your different doors. And these are all objects that we can do stuff with. For instance, let's take a look at door one. You can move these around. I'm going to hit this rotation and it kind of gives you this globe. So the door is connected and watch this. I can open that door. So more importantly, take a look at these numbers down here because that's how we're going to be able to control this in WinCC. So with the door closed, then your rotation for your door one object should be all zeros. And then when your doors open, then we can put it up somewhere like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to manipulate these numbers through script and kind of do things with this object here. So before we jump into the details of integrating a 3D control into your SCADA application, let's take a look at where you get the reference material. I will be placing this link into the description of this video, but I want you to come here and download these documents. They have a PDF, which is the manual for the 3D control, and the multimedia document, which is the same information, but it's in HTML format. So the PDF, standard Siemens manual, it's all linear. You just kind of have to scroll back and forth and find out what you want. It's got descriptions of the properties and all the methods 
methods and things like that. The multimedia is just HTML based. It's the same information as a help file. Here's the supported formats of the 3D files that you can use with this control. Siemens favorite word, dynamization, how you can make things happen, change properties, make things blink, change color, open doors, that kind of stuff. And then it gives a description of all your properties and you can just kind of look at these properties, standard help file. Now the dynamization section, this is where we're going to be working mostly. We're going to be looking at the methods. So looking at the list of methods, they're named appropriately. So you've got get and set. You can get the color or position of objects, things like that. We're going to be using mostly the set methods where we're actually changing the appearance of the 3D control, moving it around. We are going to look at set camera position, which moves the position of the camera so we can get into the orientation that we want. We're also going to set object blink so we can blink different parts of this. Set object material color, that's going to allow us to change the color of the property and also set object rotation. This is going to allow us to open the cabinet doors and stuff like that. So let's go back to graphics designer and start using some of these methods. Now before I do this, I'm going to need to be able to switch between the explore mode so that I can get the rotations and the angles and things like that from the engineering side. And then I got to switch over to the runtime side when we add the buttons. The mode property is not something you can manipulate in runtime. Believe me, I have tried. So what I want to do is create a quick interface so that we can switch between these. And what I'm going to do is for our laser cabinet, this guy is in the explore mode. So I'm going to save this as laser cabinet explore. And I'll just save that. And then I'll go back to my laser cabinet itself. And I will just switch this to the runtime mode. And then we're going to just create another screen. And we're going to save this as 3D overview. And I'm just gonna throw a picture window up here. I'll go down to my picture name. And by default, we will go to our Laser Cabinet Explorer. And then we'll just set this up to automatically size itself. And I'll give it a border, give it a title. And then I'm just gonna add a couple of buttons here. This will set Explore mode. And we'll just throw a direct connect on here real quick. And We'll hit the penguin icon, that's what I like to call it. And we will just put the laser explorer into here, into our picture name. And then I'll just duplicate this. And we're going to change our picture here to just laser cabinet. And set this to runtime. We'll do a quick check in runtime. There's my explore mode. There's my runtime. So we'll go back to explore. This way we'll be able to get the information we need very quickly. So we're gonna start with something simple. What I wanna do for this example is, I'm just gonna zoom in, I'm gonna select this. That tells us this is the laser body and here's your position and rotation, and scale, stuff like that. What we wanna do for this example is turn that object red. So maybe there's an alarm with a laser head, it needs the operator's attention. So we're gonna to go to material, I'm gonna select the color and we're gonna pick a color here. So I wanna turn it red, I'm gonna do some kind of nice round numbers because I don't really have any short-term memory retention. So 200, 20, and 20, I think I can remember that. And we can just go over here. Yep, that looks good. So let's go back to graphics designer. I am going to duplicate a button and we'll put a script on here that will turn that laser head red. So first, let's just change the text here. We'll set this to laser alarm. And we'll go to events and we're going to do a VBS script. So in the VBS editor, I'm just going to put a comment. If you follow my videos, you know that I like to do my comments first. So we're going to just put change laser body color. And of course, we need to know how to do that. So we're going to go over to our documentation and in our list of methods, we're just gonna scroll down and set object material color extended. That looks like the function that we need or the method. And it tells you we're gonna set the material color of an object, that's great. What we need to know is the name of the object and what color we wanna set it. And if you look at the parameters, it's pretty self-explanatory. The transparent opacity and index, those are optional as well. 
And the activate, this is kind of a neat parameter where if you set it to true, it just reverts back to its original color. So that's kind of handy. We'll probably use that a little bit later. And then your color format, and notice that it's in the format of a string. So we're going to use that. And then if we scroll down, you can see they give us a nice example. So I'm just going to grab just this portion and copy it. And we'll go back to our code body and I'm gonna paste it in. Now we're gonna to need to change this a little bit because it's going right to screen items. And if you look, I'm just gonna click okay here. The 3D control is not on this screen. It's actually on the screen being referenced by this picture window. And so the name of this picture window is picture window one. And so our VB code needs to reference whatever picture that picture window one is showing. So how do we do that? Well, if we open up the help under the VB VBS reference, they have some examples. And so if we go to the writing object properties example, they do tell you how to reference a screen in a script through a picture window. And so all you have to do is get a reference to that picture window and then just do dot screen. And then you do your normal screen items and go pick the object that you want to create a reference to. So I'm just going to copy this and I'll go back to our button and go back to VB. And we're just going to paste that right in here, put my dot. And this is not correct. So I'll just use my object picker. We're on the 3D overview screen is picture window one. And then this is the custom web control that's showing the 3D object. So we didn't name it that. So we'll have to go change that as well. And here's another pro tip. This will only work if you're referencing a control that is in the runtime mode and not the explore mode. So laser cabinet is the screen and we want the custom web control one and we'll click OK. So that should give us a reference to our 3D control object. And here we're going to do laser body. Now here's another pro tip. You got to get the case right on this. I spent a few minutes wondering why it wasn't working and it's because I had the B capitalized. So make sure that you get the case right on your object name. Then RGB, we're just going to do 200 comma 20 comma 20. Now this is the property that sets it back to the original color, but I think that if you have any parameters back here, it just kind of ignores that. So I'm just going to leave it there. I'll click OK, save, and we'll go to runtime. And we have to go to the runtime mode and we'll click the button and it works. So we can kind of zoom in and see that. Now I'm going to go back to the explore mode and hit the button and notice nothing changes. So you can't be in this mode and run these scripts. It's just not going to do anything for you. So now that we can set the color for our laser head, let's go ahead and put in a button to reset the color back to the original state and also make it blink. So we'll go back to Graphics Designer. I'm just gonna duplicate this button here. And we will set our text, Reset Alarm. And we'll go into the code. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this Activate property and I think I found kind of a disagreement between how it actually works and the documentation. So let's go back to the documentation. It says activate, restore the original color. So you would think, well, if activate is true, then that is going to restore the original color. And that's supported by this statement. If the parameter is true, further parameters are ignored. That's not the way it works because we turned it red and this parameter was true and we put red in here. What I found is if you want to restore the original color, you put false in here and you don't have any other parameters. So I think this is a discrepancy in the documentation. So we will go back and we will just set this to false. And I'm just going to get rid of the rest of this and just click OK. And we're going to save. Now we'll test this out in runtime. And I really should set this window to default to the runtime screen. Here's us setting the alarm. Here's us resetting the alarm. So it looks like the help is wrong on this one. So now let's update the laser alarm code to make the laser body also blink. And then we'll update the reset to stop it from blinking. We'll go back to graphics designer and let's take a quick look at the documentation. So we're going to use a set object blink extended method. Of course, we got to pass in the object name and an interval for how fast you want it to flash and then what color that you want it to flash. Then they also have this Siemens color and it's only valid if you have a Siemens camera. And so we're not going to use that. The transparent and opacity is also optional. So all we really need to do is send the name of the object, how fast and what color. I'm also going to take some of this trace 
gray stuff down here and I'm just going to copy all of this actually just that and I'm going to copy this and we're going to go down to our laser alarm and you do have to set an object reference every time and I've tried reusing this object uh, I could probably do a redim or something like that but I'm just going to do flashing and we'll use flashing here I need to replace this here and this here as far as our function call, I tried setting this to null. This is the Siemens camera. I tried putting nothing in there. I tried doing a null. So I think what you must have to do is just skip it. We're going to try that living dangerously today. And I'm just going to leave the opacity in there. And of course, we want our laser body. So I'm just going to paste that in there. We're going to flash at 500 milliseconds. And this is all red and no green and no blue. And of course, we have to get our object reference correct. So we're just going to copy that from the first one and paste it into here. So let's try. We'll hit OK, save, go to runtime. And I really should default this to the runtime version of the control rather than engineering. And we're just going to try this. And it does flash. So that's good. Now we need to update our reset alarm to make it stop flashing. Bounce back over here to our reset. Actually, let's go here. I'll grab this. Come over to our reset alarm. Of course, I need to dim this guy. And what we want to do is just set this to zero. And I don't think I need any of this here in order to do this. So. This should stop it from flashing. We'll click OK, save, and go back to runtime. So here's our alarm. We're blinking, and we're going to reset. Now, I'm going to pull up AP Diag. If you're not familiar with AP Diag, it gives you a debug window, and you can print to this window from scripts. I'm going to hit my laser alarm, and it printed out the return from our blinking, and it basically gave me a success or fail. You could use this for error testing. If you're writing some scripts, you want to make sure that the script succeeded, it found the object, it was able to call the function, then you can use this to do some error handling in your script. So that's kind of a, another pro tip. Okay, so now let's figure out how to open the equipment door down here. We're going to select the door that we want. I'm going to hit the rotation button here, and I'm just going to grab it so that I can rotate it about the Y axis. Let's say that I want to open it about that much. That's 76.95. Let's call that 75 degrees. Going back to our documentation, if you look at set object rotation, notice that your X, Y, and Z are in radians and not degrees. However, this is in degrees, so you have to convert it. So what we'll do is I'll just copy this part of it. Go back to Graphics Designer. I'll duplicate a button here. And we will open Lower Door. I'm just going to paste in the method name. And this is Door 02. And our value was 75. And so to convert that to radians, we have to basically multiply it by 0.0175. So we'll come here. 75 times 0.0175 is going to be 1.3. So we'll just do 1.3. We don't need this other stuff that's kind of left over. All right, so that looks good. We'll hit OK. We'll save and we'll test it out in runtime. Go to our runtime control. Forgot to change that. Hit open lower door and it's open. So I'll very quickly create a button to close it. And all I have to do is change this to a zero. Save it, go to runtime, open the door and close the door. Okay, so for this last function that we're going to do, we're going to move the camera so that it gets a different view of our laser cabinet. Or a good way to understand this is first, let's go back to the documentation. And we're going to use the set camera extended method. Basically, this moves and rotates the camera. So the camera that we're talking about is basically hanging in space relative to this object. And so its default position is kind of right in front of it. The first three coordinates are the camera position in space. So I would have 
have to kind of figure out where in space I wanted the camera to be to see another side of the equipment. And then you also have the camera rotation. And this is how we rotate the camera from its position. And it's also X, Y, and Z. And then there are some scaling. There is field of view, near and far, and fly duration, which is how long it takes the animation to go from where the camera started to where it ends up. So going back to this, the way that I kind of figured this out is I first zeroed out my camera. And so this camera in this file, I guess, is a virtual camera, is laying on the floor pointed at the equipment. So the first is X, second is Y, third is Z. So if I just go back on my Z position, I'm kind of back away from the cabinet, and then I'm going to go up in my Y position, somewhere about 30. Okay, so now we're kind of looking at the equipment. And what I want to do is I want to move around to the right side, kind of with the corner, and then I want to point the camera at this laser head here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the X position, and we're going to move to the right. So I'm going to say give it 20. So now it's kind of moving off to my left. Maybe I'll go a little bit more, say 30. And now what I want to do is move in on the Z axis. I'll move this just a little bit so you can kind of see what's happening, but I'm just kind of moving forward, I guess. So I'm just going to kind of take a guess here and go to 15. And now, of course, the equipment's out of our view. I need to rotate the camera in the Y axis to the left a little bit. So let's just give it 50 degrees. And so it's turned around and now we see this. And so let's say that this is the view that we want. I'm going to go with 30, 30, and 15 for XYZ position, and then just a 50 degree left angle on my rotation. So I'll go back to my documentation. For this particular function, it doesn't have the example code at the bottom. So we're just going to have to kind of remember what our method is called, set camera extension. So I am going to copy this function prototype because I'll definitely forget them. And we're going to go to graphics designer. I'm going to duplicate a button here. I'll set the text on the button to move camera. And we're going to edit this VBS script here. So I'm just going to pop these up here and come in them out that are just for reference. Get rid of this guy here. The set camera extended. I'll just copy this. We're going to paste that in. And then now we've got to put in all these. So the X, Y, and Z are the camera position. So we had that as 30X, 30Y, 15Z, and then the rotation. So X rotation was zero. Our Y rotation was 50. Z rotation was zero. The next three are scaling factors. We're not scaling this, so they're all one. After that, we have our field of view, which is 50. We have our near and far, so 0.01 and 1,000. And then our animation time, let's set it to two and a half seconds. So I'll just click OK. Set and I did remember to set my picture name to laser cabinet, which is our control that's in the runtime mode already. So we'll just go to run. It is going to come up in the runtime mode. I'm going to hit move camera and we're going to move around to the right side and take a look at the laser and we can definitely turn on the laser or throw it into alarm. We can reset it. So that's how you move the camera. One of the questions that I get is the 3D object is really neat, but can it really be useful in a SCADA project? So what I did was I integrated this into my step-by-step -step project and I kind of cleaned everything up, but this is basically the same code. So we can move the camera, we can turn our laser on, we can move it back home and we can open and close the door. And that's really neat, but is it really all that useful? We can use this to give great information to the operator at the right time. That's what SCADA is supposed to do. So we created some animations. Here, when this page loads, it automatically goes right into this animation. I'll show you the other one. Here's just another test module alarm where it opens the door and blinks. And so what we did was we integrated this into the alarm system. Now, if you've been following step by step, I did a video. I'm going to pop a link up here above if you want to check it out. If you have an alarm, we can use the loop in alarm functionality 
to double click an alarm and go directly to a page. And so what we did was we created a couple of internal tags and created some alarms and we set these up to show these animation pages when the alarm was clicked. I'm using the tag simulator to simulate these alarms coming in and you can see they're coming in down here. If I double click on the laser control, it loads the page and it shows the animation. If I double click on the laser has malfunctioned, it shows this. And this can be very helpful to an operator if they're working with this laser. Maybe they don't know where the laser head is or something, so we can show them very quickly. So yes, this is actually a very useful tool. So the last thing I'm going to show you is I'm gonna show you how we did the animation when the page loads. So we're gonna go back to Graphics Designer, and I just have a 3D control here, and we went to the events, and there is an on playing event. So this fires after your control is loaded, because you know, it takes a few seconds for that control. And then in our VB script, this should look pretty familiar. And this is exactly what we did during the course of this video. So I'm setting an object rotation, I'm setting the camera position, I'm blinking the robot control, which is in the bottom door. And we're doing the same thing on the alarm page just kind of slightly different parameters. Here we're just setting blink. I don't actually have to set color because blink setting the color and we're moving the camera. So the effect of that is when that page is loaded, the playing event triggers and it shows you the animation. If you've enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends. This is going to help me be able to bring more videos to you. I really appreciate you hanging in there with me today. Hope you found this useful. Thanks.